In America of the past, discrimination was real and it came in various forms and dimensions. The blacks were treated as subhumans and at some point they were treated as though they did not exist. In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of how the first black man to be admitted into Oklahoma State University was treated in the course of his journey to attend university education in America. His name, George W. McLaurin. At the time of his admission into Oklahoma State University, there were 12,174 students on campus and George McLaurin was the only black man among them. The odds against him were pretty obvious, but George was determined to pursue his dream and in the process, change the status quo in racial treatment in America. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. He was born black. He was born in America. By his skin color, there was obviously a story around his ancestry. His forebears were forced into America from Africa through the sea routes. On arrival in America, the forebears were subjected to slavery and made to work for long hours in plantations for their slave masters. It was a tale, a tale of anguish, a tale of suffering, inhuman and degrading treatments. Some of the slaves survived the situation. Others died at sea on their way to America. Others died just on arrival while others died in the plantations. For those that died at sea, their bodies were thrown away at sea for the fishes to feed on. For those that died at the plantations, they were summarily discarded in shallow and unidentified graves. For those that were lucky to have humane masters, their conditions were a bit better, but for those that had draconian masters, their conditions were terrible. What the black slaves in America went through in the hands of their slave masters have been well documented in history, and the extent of suffering can only be best imagined than described. But these slaves persevered and continued to forge on with life. Eventually, slavery and the inhuman and degrading treatment of the slaves became an issue of global concern. It was unacceptable to many. This led to the eventual abolition of slavery and slave trade. The merchants that had benefited immensely from the wealth that they made from slave trading resisted all attempts to end slave trade. But the weight of opinion for the ending of the practice was too strong and in due course slavery was abolished. The people of color thus began to live their lives as free people. They married and began to raise offsprings. They went through various stages of discrimination in the American society, but they continued to forge on in the hope and expectation that things would one day change for the better. This did not come quick nor easy. The blacks had to struggle for years to be emancipated and be treated as humans. It took the open struggle of the likes of Martin Luther King Jr., and the others for him to be able to secure some measure of humane treatment for the blacks and people of color in America. When the initial phases of discrimination had eased off, other phases of discrimination emerged. The blacks had determined to send their children to schools. They were determined to send them to the best attainable levels of education. But this was where another phase of discrimination emerged. Black children were not allowed to attend schools with white children. Their skin color was seen as repulsive. In some institutions, blacks were denied admission outright. The only reason for the denial was their skin color. In other institutions where admission was offered, the admission was with stringent conditions. This continued for years, but the blacks had an undying spirit. 
They opposed the discrimination and continued to fight for a change in attitude towards them and for them to be treated as humans. Still, the situation continued. But still, the blacks were not ready to accept the status quo. They were ready to fight for their rights. Some carried placards, some joined in protest, others wrote articles for newspapers, others went on radio, while others went to court to seek interpretation of their constitutional rights. This is where the name George W. McLaurin has a special mention in the history of the struggle for the total emancipation of the black man in his quest to attend formal education in America. George was the first black person to be offered admission into Oklahoma State University, but on the condition that he should sit separately from his classmates to take lectures. An anteroom was created for him. In other words, during lectures, white students who were in the majority sat in the main bowl of the classroom while George McLaurin was given a cubicle to sit and receive lectures with his classmates. The separation was obvious for anyone to see. George the black man was prohibited from sitting and mingling with the whites in his class. It was a clear case of racial profiling and segregation. It was not only in the classroom, it was the same in the cafeteria, restroom, and libraries. It was humiliating for George, hence his determination to fight back through the court. George filed a suit, McLaurin versus Oklahoma State Regents, stating that these conditions deprived him of equality. The district court was not in agreement with his argument and thus denied his motion for the reason that racial segregation is, quote, a deeply rooted social policy of the state of Oklahoma. George appealed to the United States Supreme Court and maintained his argument that making him sit in an ante room to receive lectures away from his white classmates was a violation of his constitutional rights and dignity of human person. He argued that the 14th Amendment of the American Constitution was being violated by such treatment. In its judgment, the American Supreme Court ruled that the treatment of students must be equal between white and African American students. The court added that McLaurin had not received equal treatment as required by the Constitution. Writing for the court, Chief Justice Frederick Winson wrote, that McLaurin was handicapped in his pursuit of effective graduate instruction, that such restrictions impair and inhibit his ability to study, to engage in discussion and exchange views with other students, and in general, to learn his profession. By this judgment, the status quo in Oklahoma was altered and altered forever. Black students in the university and in all other states in America took advantage of this judgment. They were now able to attend classes with the whites without segregation. A significant milestone had been achieved. George McLaurin became an instant hero in the whole of America, especially among the black communities. George McLaurin was born on September 16, 1887. He lived till September 4, 1968. He was 81 years old when he died. He went through the layers of formal education, including graduate studies, and rose to become a professor in America. In 2014, an annual conference was named after George McLaurin on the Oklahoma State University campus called the George McLaurin Male Leadership Conference. The conference is mainly attended for the recruitment of first-generation college students and particularly those within minority groups. A campus lounge with a memorial display in the University Community Center is also named in honor of McLaurin and Sylvia A. Lewis, another student who challenged segregation at Oklahoma State University. 
The name George McLaurin shall remain in the history books of America and the world for many more years to come. He was a trailblazer, and by his courageous disposition and determination to challenge the status quo, he broke racial barriers and wrote his name on the sands of time. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video. I remain your friend and host, Ekemini Udim.